Kokoko hmm. disease. Krogan culture. The harsh Krogan homeworld conditioned the Krogan psychology for toughness, just as it did the body. Krogan have always had a tendency to be selfish, unsympathetic, and blunt. They respect strength and self-reliance, and are neither surprised nor offended by treachery. The weak and selfless do not live long, oh dear. In their culture, looking out for number one is simply a matter of course. After their defeat in the rebellions, the very concept of Krogan leadership was discredited. Where a warlord could once command enough power to bring entire solar systems to heal and become overlord, these days it is rare for a single leader to have more than a thousand warriors who swear allegiance to him. Most Krogan trust and serve no one but themselves. This solitary attitude stems in part from a deep sense of fatalism and futility, a profound social effect of the genophage that caused Krogan numbers to dwindle to a rel relative handful. Not only are they angry that the entire galaxy seems out to get them, the Krogan are also generally pessimistic about their race's chances of survival. The surviving, surviving Krogan see no point to building for the future, for there will be no future. The Krogan live with an attitude of kill, pillage, be selfish, for tomorrow we die. Or, I think, as it is in the Bible, um, when that's what they're saying that people without God are like, it's eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow we die. Right, Ashley. Oh, before I go, you said you're serving with Commander Shepard now? We saw him on the news here. He's cute. Later, sis. Tell me you didn't hear that. Was that a relative? You were a sister, I assume? Until I get home and kill her. That's Sarah, the youngest. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. I, I didn't mean to. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. Mmm, sounds familiar. I was an only child, but I get the idea. At least one of my parents was always on duty. Yeah, military families, eh? With schedules like that, it's a wonder we ever have kids anymore. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Tell me about it. Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did. Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails and I'd tell her to relax. Mmm, vid mails? I'm guessing they're like email type things. Video. Vid mails? Where were you when this was going on? That what? All right. I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen LY away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. I'm guessing something changed. Sounds like that situation didn't last. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing Mom and Dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah's school for a few days. Dedica that's dedicated of you. You traveled all the way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years, like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. Oh dear. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look. This, let me handle it. I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. <laughs> I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk, and there's blood everywhere. <laughs> wow. That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight-up puncher. When he swung, she just... She wasn't there anymore, and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was going to end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. 
The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. <laughs> That's a good story, and I suppose a good moral. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that love me and alone. Who's that? For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Um, yeah, that does sound tennyson -y. It's whether I say I like, I like, mm, yeah, Tennyson. Tennyson, right? I didn't know you liked classical literature. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. That's a good piece. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. So behave. Watching? I thought you said he was dead. <laughs> you know, from heaven. Wherever that is. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Yeah, I do, too. You know that old saw, there's never an atheist in a foxhole? I've been in a lot of foxholes. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you have. I've met a few people who were really weirded out by my faith. Because I work in space, I can't believe in a higher power. Jeez. Hello, have you people looked out the window? How can you look at this galaxy and not believe in something? I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. Uh, how are we doing? What's your opinion on the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? Like I said, the Rachni are dangerous. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It was yours. If you haven't talked to Dr. Tassoni, you probably should. She just lost her mom. That has to hurt. Just saying, Skipper. Thanks for that, Ash. Goodbye. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, Skipper. Right, another codex. So we will read this, and then... Military Doctrine The Alliance military is of great concern to the galaxy. At first contact with the Turians, they were completely inexperienced. Turian disdain changed to respect after the relief of Shanxi, where the humans surprised them with novel technologies and tactics. The human devotion to understanding and adapting to modern space warfare stunned the staid council races. For hundreds of years, they had lived behind secure walls of long proven Long, long proven, long proven technologies and tactics. The Council regards the Alliance as a sleeping giant. Less than three percent of humans volunteer to serve in their military, a lower proportion than any other species. While competent, Alliance soldiers are neither as professional as the Turians nor as skilled as the Asari. Their strengths lie in fire support, flexibility, and speed. They make up for lack of numbers with sophisticated technical support, VIs, drones, artillery, electronic warfare, and emphasis on mobility and individual initiative. Their doctrine is not based on absorbing and dishing out heavy shocks like the Turians and Krogan. Rather, they bypass enemy strong points and launch deep into their rear, cutting supply lines and destroying headquarters and supply units, leaving enemies to wither on the vine. On defense, the human military is a rapid reaction force that lives by Sun Tzu's maxim, he who tries to defend everything, defends nothing. Garrisons are intended for scouting rather than combat, avoiding engagements to observe and report on invaders using drones. The token garrisons of human colonies make it easy for alien powers to secure them, for which the Al Al Alliance media criticizes the military. However, the powerful fleet stationed at Phase Gate Nexuses should it be Nexi? I don't know. Nexus is... Nexi? Such as Arcturus are just a few hours or days from any colony within their spear, sp spear? sphere of responsibility. In the event of an attack, they respond with overwhelming force. So, yes. We've talked to everyone. Uh, we've only got a few... We've only got 
well, I see we've only got a little bit of way to go. I have no idea how long we've got left in this game. Which I quite like, actually. So, we've done uh, Novaria and quite a few of the side thingy thingamies, or side quests, as they're more, com more commonly known. We now have another one with uh, Garrus, which I think will probably be the one, one of the ones we do next. Though I don't know. Um, here we are. So, Garrus wants us to find Dr. Salian. Um, and it's probably in the, in the Herschel system in the Kepler Verge. And we've only got one main quest left to do, so we'll do a few of these, I, th I think. And then we'll do... Uh, this mission at Feroth's. Right. So, um, I think that's where we're going to call it for this recording session. Thanks for watching.